Hey guys, it's John Adarolo for the Young Turks, and it is Inauguration Eve. You might have watched some of what was going on in DC, which would make you one of the few. You might even have attended, but probably not because the crowds are incredibly small. But on this Inauguration Eve, before what will be about 12 hours of live streaming coverage of the inauguration uh, on the Young Turks, of which I'll be there for at least 10 of those hours, I've been thinking about Donald Trump and looking at some of the things that he's said in interviews and on Twitter over the past couple of weeks, and a few things that we've touched on in videos I think I need to focus on a little bit more, because there is a psychological component to Donald Trump that makes him far more dangerous than other presidents we've had in the past, whether Democrats or Republicans. Now, before I get into that, there are some topic areas that I think make him particularly dangerous. Uh, topic areas where I think he can do damage that cannot be repaired can't be repaired in decades, possibly, possibly in generations, and some things that we as a species might never be able to recover from, such as his uh, perhaps unique ability to uh, doom any efforts to stop uh, climate change from passing the sort of uh, the important thresholds of uh, a couple of degrees Celsius above the current temperatures. But then there's things like the tax cuts and, and the, the, the rooting out, the gutting of uh, public education, all of that. But beyond any of these individual policies, there's Trump's psychology, and that is what makes him so dangerous. And it's this. It's his detachment from reality. It's his lack of any faith or trust in the ability to look out at the universe and through the techniques that we have fought as a species for thousands of years to develop, like the scientific method, uh, to find out about reality and to establish facts. And he doesn't believe in any of that. He doesn't accept those facts. He everybody has cognitive biases, and uh, they will uh, apply filters to the information coming in. Many of you who are watching this might be conservatives, and you say, oh, John, you're biased in a liberal way. Fine, I am in some ways, and conservatives are biased too. Everybody uses those filters. But people are still at core generally reasonable people. They do want their beliefs to be true. They might believe things that are, that are false, but they wish that they were true. But he honestly doesn't seem to care about that. And it's been demonstrated in a couple of ways recently. So uh, uh, we, we cover this on the Young Turks. A bunch of polls have come out about his approval rating and the approval of his transition. And it's incredibly low. We're talking like 30s, low 40s. Now, presidents will often end up with that sort of uh, approval rating. Even uh, Obama has been on the low side. Uh, now, he's much more popular now. But transitions, like the, the sort of approval of the incoming president, generally is much more hopeful and optimistic, except not for Trump. And that might, with a normal president, make you think... You know, why is it that everybody already dislikes my administration? But not for Trump, because he tweeted this. The same people who did the phony election polls and were so wrong are now doing approval rating polls. They are rigged just like before. And that got over 100,000 likes. And here's the thing. Uh, I uh, fought against the people on the right and on the left who uh, attacked polling individual polls, and the idea of polling throughout the primary uh, and the general election. And I know the state polls were off by a couple of points. That's what a margin of error is. But for some reason, people who've never studied polls, uh, some don't seem to understand that. And the national polls said that she would win by several points. She won by several points. And yet we're sort of, we're, we're creating this false history where the polls were really off. People interpreted the polls. You could even say I interpreted the polls as uh, giving us too high of a degree of certainty that, that Hillary Clinton would win. But the polls were not off in any sort of historic way. And we have no reason to believe that these approval rating polls are false. In fact, there's very good reason to believe they'd be more accurate than the election polls. Because in an election, you have to try to weed out from the population at large who is likely to vote. And doing that can actually damage the, uh, the accuracy of a poll. But with this, we're not trying to figure out who's actually going to go out there and do something. We just want people's opinions. And so it's incredibly likely that this is accurate, but he doesn't accept it. Now, does he not accept it because he's previously studied how to construct polling models and he has alternative models that he thinks are more accurate? No, of course he doesn't do that. He just doesn't accept it because he doesn't like it. He doesn't think it can't possibly be true because I really love myself, sort of. So everybody else has to, too. 
and so he doesn't accept it. And we're going to return to that in a second, because this is not simply a funny little tweet and haha, let's make fun of him. This is incredibly dangerous, but it goes beyond the approval ratings. So uh, recently, he's taken to, uh, to Twitter and interviews to take credit when companies announce that they're going to be building factories or moving factories back to the U.S., bringing jobs to the U.S., and then he will go forward and say, oh, thank you, Brand X, for doing this. Let's make America great again. And then reporters talk to the companies and say, wait, is this because of Trump? Are you doing this because you talked to Trump or blah, blah, blah? And they say almost uniformly, no. We didn't do this because of Trump. It has nothing to do with that. In fact, many of these uh, announcements we've previously talked about five months, six months before, a year before. We don't understand why he's trying to take credit for this. And he attacked those reports. He attacked NBC News for going and talking to the companies about why it is that they were bringing the jobs back and whether Trump had anything to do with it. But this is a verifiable thing. Those companies had already talked about those jobs before Trump was elected, but he demands that he get credit for them. Now, when you combine those two things, this is a very dangerous mix because in the past, if a president does something that's incredibly unpopular, takes the country in a direction that's unpopular, they care about their future chances of winning re-election, the chances of their party winning seats in the midterms, perhaps. They care about that stuff, and so they will, in some cases, modify their course. Even presidents who I disagree with on almost every issue, George W. Bush, for instance, one of the worst presidents of my life, he modified as a result of his approval ratings going down. His response to Katrina was incredibly unpopular, and so he made some changes afterward. His attempt to, uh, to privatize uh, Medicare was incredibly unpopular nationally, and so he modified his behavior as a result of that. And that's what we want. We want people to look out there and say, do people like what I'm doing? Do they like what I'm proposing? Do they like what I'm advocating for? And if they don't, I'll go in a different direction. But he's showing that not only is he not the sort of person to respond to changes in approval ratings, he doesn't think you can measure approval ratings. He doesn't even think you can measure crowd sizes because he's bragging about his inauguration concert saying it's huge when the photos show that it is far, 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 far smaller than Barack Obama's. But it doesn't matter to him. It's the biggest, most beautiful crowd ever. And so if his approval ratings go down, that's a lie. You can't trust it, okay? Now... If, uh, if job numbers aren't good, if job growth numbers aren't good, that's fake news. That's rigged against him. That's just the mainstream media. And so why would he change his economic policies if changes in the unemployment rate or in job growth or in GDP growth are all fake news? Now, when you combine those two things, you have a guy who feels unaccountable to anyone not even to his supporters, because the second a supporter of Donald Trump says something bad about him, that person's evil and he casts him aside. And so this is a guy who is going to do whatever the hell he wants to do to feel good, to enrich himself or his family, and he's not going to be accountable to the facts. He's not going to be accountable to the population, because it doesn't matter what the population thinks if you believe that you can't actually measure it. And to tie this in with something that I've been talking about over the course of the past couple of weeks, here's the thing that is most troubling to me. It's something that I've noticed from Republicans for a long time, but it's accelerating under Trump. And unfortunately, I'm seeing it from some on the supposed left as well. It's this demonizing rational inquiry, scientific inquiry, journalistic inquiry. If it's, if it's popular to attack a group of scientists or a news outlet, they will do it for the ad revenue, whether on the right or on the left. But what they're doing there is assisting Donald Trump in moving us from a, from a society, from a civilization where we believe there is truth that we can find to one where reality is not knowable. It doesn't matter what science says. It doesn't matter what journalists find. None of that matters. Reality is based on what I think and what I feel. There is no objective truth that we can, uh, that we can quest for, that we can try to find and then, uh, then, then vote based on, then advocate for policies based on. And I don't want to see that from the right, and I don't want to see that from the left either. This demonization of people who are trying to find out the truth, who are trying to find facts that may be inconvenient for people who run their lives based on emotion, based on their feelings. And that is what Trump is hoping for here. He's saying polling is fake. It's fake news. You can't find out about it. Scientists, you can't trust them. It's all a hoax. The job numbers, the, the economic analyses is all fake. You can't trust it. 
Do not allow yourselves to listen to this. Don't allow yourselves to descend into this sort of scientific, uh, scientific apathy where nothing is knowable. Okay, that's his goal. And if he can get enough of the population to believe this bullshit, it doesn't matter what he does over the next four years, he will be reelected because you will not be accountable for the things that you do. America will be great because it's on his hat, even if it's not there in the actual statistics that represent what the country is. Anyway, I'm looking at a couple of these comments, and uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of the people commenting on this live chat have already bought into this sort of propaganda. But anyway, uh, okay, uh, thank you for joining me. It's Inauguration Eve. These are some of the things I'm thinking about before we switch over to, uh, to Donald Trump. We switch from a democracy into, at best, a proto-fascist state, and God knows where it'll end up in two years or in four years. It's one of the reasons I thought the idea that you hand up to, uh, to advance in a more progressive direction, you hand the country over to a fascist and hope that they'll give it back to you someday was a bad idea. Well, we're going to find out because it starts tomorrow. We're going to be doing uh, live coverage from 9 a.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. So tune in. I'll be there. Everybody from the Young Turks will be there. You can follow me on Twitter at John Iderola. Uh, I'm going to be live tweeting the entirety of the inauguration events and hopefully using that as a bit of a therapy as our country is buried. But anyway, thank you for joining me and I'll see you later.